we should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is our salvation, our life, our resurrection. Through him we are saved and set free. Sing my tongue the hymn of glory, of the final conflict sing. Shout the triumph of the victim, far and wide the echoes ring. Jesus Christ, the world's salvation, from the cross now reigns as King. We should glory in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our salvation, our life, our resurrection. Through him we are saved and made free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We are entombed by evil, and the threat of spiritual death, we confess our sins and ask God's forgiveness for our failings. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, Upper Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may the Lord forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon the land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revealed. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Martha was the one who anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So, the sisters went to, the, to the Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When the master heard this, he said, This illness will not end in death but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. After this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just going to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told him, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So when Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe, let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if they die, will live, and everyone who believes, who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into this world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, secretly saying, The teacher is here and asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. 
So when the Jews who were with him in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Jesus came to where, so when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and was deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So Jesus said, So the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something to that man so he would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a, lay, and a stone laid across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he had been there for three days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I thank you that you always hear me because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him, let him go free. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen what he had done began to believe in him. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry for the relatively simple Mass that we're having today. I literally just returned from my vacation, and we really didn't have time to set up a recording, so I thought I would just do it privately in the chat. Today we hear that beautiful story of Lazarus. But it's not only about Lazarus, it's also about Martha and Mary. And so I think what's important for us first to understand is that Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. It's very clear from the very beginning of the Gospel story. Jesus here with human emotion, just like you and I have. Now God loves all of us equally. So when we hear the story, we know that Jesus loves us, too. And Jesus cares about us. But yet he waits. He waits to go to see Lazarus until Lazarus had already died. And part of was that was so that he could show the glory of God, especially for his disciples, so that they would have strength. Because remember, Jesus is now going to Galilee, which is near Jerusalem. So he is going and approaching his death. Jesus knows what is going on and what will happen to it. So he needs to give his disciples a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of hope. And then we hear this beautiful interaction with him and Martha. I mean, can't you just hear Martha's voice? Lord, if you would have been here, this wouldn't have happened. And how many times do we say that to God when we look around the world, when we see things happening, perhaps like war or terror? God, if you would have been here, this would not have happened. But not only in world events, perhaps even in our own lives, with the sickness of ourselves, or a family member, or the death of someone whom we love, a disappointment, a betrayal. Maybe we say the same thing. Lord, if you would have been here, almost pounding our fist, this would not have happened. But what does Jesus do to Martha? Does he yell at her? Does he scold her? No. He slowly explains to her. He talks to her. And then she makes a profession of faith. I believe. 
That's what the Lord wants from us. He wants us to say those very same words, and not only to say them, to know them in our heart and in our minds, to believe. And the same with Mary. Again, Jesus leads her to a deeper understanding of who he is, waiting for that profession of faith. And then they go to the tomb. The tomb, the thing of death. Martha knowing that it would have a stench where he had been gone for four days. And what does Jesus do? He weeps. He weeps bitterly, the scriptures tell us. Again, filled with human emotion. And then he says, take away the stone. How many times does Jesus say to us, take away the stone? The stone that stops you from believing in Jesus. The stone that perhaps keeps you bound to this world. Perhaps it's the stone of doubt. Perhaps it's the stone of fear. Perhaps it's the stone of worry and anxiety. Jesus says, take away the stone. Don't let anything block you from my glory. And what does he say? Lazarus, come out. And once the stone is taken away, he is untied and set free. That's us. We too are untied and set free from sin. But you know, we have to also understand this gospel passage. The, what happened to Lazarus was not the same as the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus rising from the dead. For Jesus rose from the dead. Lazarus was resuscitated in many ways because Lazarus would die again. Jesus would not. When Jesus rose from the dead in his full glory, he rose from the dead and is alive, never again to die. Whereas Lazarus died again. That's the difference. Because Jesus is God. But the Lord will do to us what happened to him. On that last day. When we who are in our graves will once again rise. And we will take on the glorified image of our bodies, glorified like Jesus. There was a study that I heard about, which is very shocking and very sad. You know, we hear about all these Catholics who don't believe in the Eucharist, who don't believe it's the actual body and blood of Jesus. But you know, I think there's a bigger problem. I had a friend who was at the University of Chicago, works at Calvert House, which is their type of Newman Center, and did a survey. And you would not believe the number of people who don't believe Jesus actually rose from the dead. Catholics. That is so shocking to me. Our whole faith is based upon Jesus rising from the dead that it brought strength and courage to the disciples. Don't let anyone tell you that Jesus did not rise from the dead. He rose. And that's what we will celebrate in two weeks. After we witness his passion next week, then his rising again in glory. And what does Jesus ask us? The same question he asked Martha. Do you believe? May we have the strength and the courage of Martha to say, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the one, the one who has come into the world. Let us profess what we believe. For I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting God's power to release humanity from all that holds us captive, we offer these prayers in confidence and hope. For all those thirsting for the Easter sacraments, for the people of St. Michael Parish as we break free from death and despair that entombs us and breaks our spirits, for hearts and lives that make us whole again in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people held captive by systems that deny basic human rights, for individuals and nations striking, striking, struggling to release themselves from fear and all forms of tyranny, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more decision makers and citizens in our world who true choose health over profits, life over death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are bound up by daily stress, burdens, aggravation, and work responsibilities, for the freedom to place the physical, mental, and emotional well-being of our families and our loved ones first, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, for those who are approaching death, for those without family, neighbors, or friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially all people of the world who succumb to severe disease or trauma, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your needs, your intentions, that we bring to our Heavenly Father, and the very silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you know us and you answer our prayers. Help us this life to stand firm in our faith. May we never be afraid because you remain close in love. Guide us each day as we seek your truth and see you with our eyes. Strengthen our belief in you and when we stray, reconcile us to you and to others. Walking together with your son Jesus, may we Come to Easter morning, rejoicing and renewed in heart, mind, and spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by, working, by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be, to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a wave of God's peace. Peace be with you. On you stay, qui toli specata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui toli specata mundi, Miserere nobis, 
Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Everyone who believes, who lives and believes in me, will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. I invite you to bow your heads to pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is our salvation, our life, our resurrection. Through him we are saved and set free. Tell how when at length the fullness of the holy time had come, Christ was sent the world's creator from the Father's heavenly throne and was found among us dwelling offspring of the virgin's we should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our salvation, our life, our resurrection. Through him we are saved and set free.